Hello friends, welcome to Blazor Server part 10 of Shopping Cart. In our previous video, we have seen the registration process of this entire Shopping Cart Blazor. Now, in this part, you are going to create the login page and just simply authenticate the user. So, let's go in our solution. Let's close the tab. Now, we have this login.razor page. So, let's clear off this one and let's copy the entire namespaces and libraries on our login.razor page. Apart from that, let's copy the entire style as well and paste it here. Okay, so for time being, we are repeating the design as we have already told in our previous videos that this we are going to improve at the end. Now, in our design part, the design is also going to be same and let's copy all these three parameters as well and paste it here and let's change it to login model and let's initialize the method as well so let's copy this and paste it here instead of login model let's change this to login model so this is done let's go in our register page and uh, here we have this user logged in checked out so let's copy this as well and paste it here so this is what the same code now we are going to add the design for that login structure so the design is exactly same as what we had for our registration page we have a minimum height of 400 pixel and the style is also same login box all the entire thing we have copied from our registration box okay so here if the login model is null then we are not showing anything and inside that we are using this edit form and we are using instead of register model we are using login model so the login model we have already created in our early previous videos and it contains the user key name email id and password this data annotations messages we have added for email id and password okay so here we have the same thing email login model dot email id as the banded value for the first text box and the second text box as login model dot password okay so similar we have it so let's create the method login click So similar to our register register dot underscore click, we have this login click. And here instead of register model, we are passing the login model. So we'll have to create a method in our user panel service for login. So here it's a pretty simple method. Taking the login model as the input and simply posting it to our api so let's copy the syntax and paste it here in our interface and let's go into our api and create the method for login method is this one so we have it a simple method and you can see like it's we have already used in our registration uh, process we have already used the login user so it's this login user is already created and let's save it and build the entire project let's run the project now we have already seen how the registration process works so in our database we already have three customers registered with this email id and password so let's take this one john at the gmail.com and let's go to the login and click on login the email id will get bigger john at the gmail.com and let's enter one two three four five six seven click on login and let's go and see why the message is not getting triggered 
let's put a breakpoint go to implementation and put a breakpoint here let's click on login and see f10 f10 email id not registered please check your email id this looks fine let's put a breakpoint in our logic.razor and click on continue status is false alert message comes here message is email not registered so alert message should get displayed here let's click on continue okay email id not registered because we have not entered com and let's the password is 12345 so let's enter the correct password 345 let's delete all the breakpoints and let's click on login so the user has been logged in successfully and if i click on log out then again it's fine login register home all these pages looks working properly we have the cart also here okay so this header is also looking fine now what i see is like if let's log in the user again with uh, john at the rate gmail.com 12345 login okay so here if i see i go on this my cart okay and here it is not showing anything like for which user uh, here here like I, I want to display something here above this cart so that like welcome then email id and the mobile number so that the user can know like these are the details where i'll get the emails so let's do that code let's stop debugging in our my cart let's close all the tabs open my cart here above this cart i want to add one div So here I have created a div with some padding and alignment and uh, here inside this I have this username not equal to null and email not equal to null. If they are not null then I am simply showing this span with the name and email id. That means the user is logged in. In that case only we will get the username and email and if the card count is not equal to null then we can simply click on clear card. So let's create this clear card method as well. So this clear click is nothing but we are creating an object of my cart as a new object and whatever is there in this session my cart we are just deleting that okay so it's a simple code and also in our this uh, on after render async method we have to check for the email id and name because here if we check then only we will be assigning it to these variables we have these two variables username and email let's put it below here as a new line okay so this username and email we have so those two will have to get it from the session if they exist that means user is logged in so let's write that code okay so here i have uh, two lines of code like get the username and user email in these sessions and if both are success then we have to assign the their value to the local variables okay so let's run this piece of code to see what impact it does let's click on login so user is authenticated and we have the name of the user here coming let's go to the cart okay so whatever div we have added because of that div this is what we have got my cart name email id let's add the cart is empty and let's add something to the cart let's go again to the cart okay so here you can see the cart we have a clear button okay so we can i can empty the entire cart let's click on clear 
and you can see the entire cart is empty again so that was the because of that div and let's add to the cart again okay now if i enter the shipping address as something india and click on checkout then nothing is happening so in our next video we will be going through the entire checkout process and then the last part will be not last after this we'll be going through the different different payment gateway integration so after the checkout process we'll be dealing with this my account so once the checkout is done that means order has been successfully placed and then after that we also have to go into our admin page and check for the order which are placed and update their status delivery status so this orders page is also pending so that was it in this video see you in the next video